Okay, in our video series of endocrinology lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about hypothyroidism. We are going to discuss the presentation, the causes, the diagnosis and treatment of hypothyroidism in detail. A 52-year-old man comes to your clinic and tells you, the doctor, for the last one year, I have been feeling fatigued. I have been feeling very lazy. I don't have the same energy as I used to have. I feel low and depressed all the time. Doctor, I have been gaining weight despite doing all the exercises, despite trying to lose the weight and restricting the diet, I am still gaining weight. Doctor, I feel that my body is swelling up. There is swelling on my face. There is swelling on the periorbital area. I was not like this before. He may show you a picture of him where he was thin, smart, young man, but now he has gained a lot of weight and there has been swelling on his face and body in the last one year. Doctor, my wife says that my voice has also changed. My voice has become more hoarse. There has been hair loss. My nails have become more brittle. My skin is getting more drier. My skin is getting more coarse. This is a classical textbook presentation of a patient with a hypothyroidism. All the systems of the body are slowing down. Therefore, the patient is having all these constellations of symptoms. This is hypothyroidism. What is hypothyroidism? Hypothyroidism is a condition where thyroid gland is inactive, resulting in deficiency of thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones are actually the fuel of the body. They are the fuel that run the machinery. The machinery is the body and the fuel is thyroid hormones. These thyroid hormones are produced from thyroid gland that is present in our neck in front of the trachea. This thyroid gland produces these thyroid hormones and whenever these thyroid hormones are deficient in body, there is no fuel to the body and when there is no fuel, the machinery stops or the machinery slows down. Therefore, there is bradycardia, the heart slows down, the GIT movements slow down. Therefore, the constipation is there in these patients. The skin gets more coarse and dry. There is alopecia, the brain slows down, there is decreased cognition, depression in these patients. It is more common in females as compared to males. Now remember, you need to understand how these thyroid hormones are produced from thyroid gland. In our brain, there is an organ called as hypothalamus. That hypothalamus sends signal to the pituitary gland, anterior pituitary, through a hormone called as thyroid-releasing hormone. That signal from hypothalamus to anterior pituitary through thyroid-releasing hormone stimulates anterior pituitary and anterior pituitary secretes another hormone called as thyroid-stimulating hormone. That thyroid stimulating hormone from anterior pituitary stimulates the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones and those thyroid hormones then act on the body. Those thyroid hormones include T3 and T4. Now remember, T3 is the active form of thyroid hormones that T4 gets converted to T3 in cells and T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. So, in hypothyroidism, there is deficiency of these hormones. Now, remember, three parts of the body are involved in the production of thyroid hormones. So, there can be a problem with any one of these three that can result in thyroid hormone deficiency. There can be problem with the thyroid gland. There can be problem with the anterior pituitary. There can be problem with the hypothalamus. Now, whenever there is problem with the thyroid gland, that is called as primary hypothyroidism. Whenever there is problem with the anterior pituitary, there, that is called as secondary hypothyroidism. And whenever there is problem with the hypothalamus, that is called as tertiary hypothyroidism. Remember, primary hypothyroidism is the most common hypothyroidism that is seen in these patients. Now, we will discuss each of the different types of hypothyroidism. Coming to primary hypothyroidism, where there is the problem with the thyroid gland. Now, the thyroid gland cannot produce T3 and T4. Therefore, there is deficiency of T3 and T4 in the body. Now, remember, whenever there is problem with the thyroid gland, the signaling from the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus increases because they want the thyroid gland to produce the thyroid hormone, but the thyroid gland is having some problem and it cannot produce thyroid hormone. Therefore, the levels of TSH and TRH in the body will increase. That is a classical 
a lab finding that is seen in patients with primary hypothyroidism. Now, what is the cause of primary hypothyroidism? Hashimoto thyroiditis is the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism. So, as I said that primary hypothyroidism is the most common one and within the causes of primary hypothyroidism, Hashimoto thyroiditis is the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism. In Hashimoto uh, thyroiditis, what happens is that there is autoimmune destruction of the thyroid gland. The immune system destroys the thyroid gland and the thyroid gland cannot function anymore. It is most common cause and it is seen in patients with HLA DR3. There is a genetic predisposition in these patients. And like other autoimmune conditions, their autoimmune conditions usually are together in many patients. Like many patients, you would see that uh, they would be having they would be having one autoimmune conditions and that one autoimmune conditions would be associated with the other autoimmune conditions as well because the immune system cannot identify the body as its own and therefore it starts attacking the body and you would see that it would be associated with other autoimmune conditions like vitiligo pernicious anemia type 1 diabetes and sle Postpartum thyroiditis. Postpartum thyroiditis, you would see a case in which a patient gave birth to a child and after giving birth to a child, patient develops phase of hyperthyroidism followed by hypothyroidism. Basically, what happens in postpartum thyroiditis is after giving birth to the baby, the patient will get an autoimmune reaction against the thyroid gland and the immune system destroys the thyroid gland and releases the preformed thyroid hormones in the body which result in the transient hyperthyroid phase and after that, that transient hyperthyroid phase the patient goes into the crash phase where the thyroid gland is completely destroyed and cannot produce thyroid hormones therefore the hypothyroidism so postpartum thyroiditis can result in hypothyroidism Nutritional iodine deficiency is the most common cause of hypothyroidism worldwide. Previously, in our countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, it used to be the most common cause of hypothyroidism. Even still, you would see many patients from far-flung areas, especially from the mountainous area, where the water is more deficient in iodine. You would receive these patients and these patients would be having big, big goiters just because that they are not having enough iodine uh, in their uh, uh, nutrition therefore they get this hypothyroidism but due to introduction of uh, uh, iodized salt the incidence of nutritional hypothyroidism has decreased to a great extent but still if you uh, consider a worldwide most common cause a worldwide most common cause of primary hypothyroidism is still iodine deficiency but most commonly the cases we see are of Hashimoto thyroiditis. Iatrogenic patients who had thyroid surgery and got their thyroid gland removed, maybe due to a parathyroid adenoma, maybe due to a thyroid nodule, or uh, on lifelong levothyroxine supplementations because they do not, their glands cannot produce thyroid hormones. Drugs like amiodarone, remember, amiodarone can cause both hyperthyroidism as well as hypothyroidism. Lithium can cause hypothyroidism. Dequirvin thyroiditis, also called as subacute granulomatous thyroiditis, it usually occurs after a flu like illness. Following a, a respiratory infection or a patient gets a upper respiratory tract infection, patients develop a, a transient phase of hyperthyroidism and there is pain in the neck. And after that transient phase of hyperthyroidism, there is hypothyroidism, just like the postpartum thyroiditis. In this, uh, in this, what happens is that after the respiratory infection, immune system attacks the gland and causes release of the preformed uh, uh, th thyroxine in the uh, gland, which results in the transient phase of hyperthyroidism, following which patients get hypothyroid due to destruction of the thyroid gland. That is called as dequirvin thyroiditis. Now, this was all about primary hypothyroidism, uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis being the most common cause. Nutritional cause being the most common worldwide due to iodine deficiency. Coming to secondary hypothyroidism. In secondary hypothyroidism, remember there is problem with the pituitary gland. The pituitary is not producing TSH. Therefore, uh, the gland is not stimulated by the TSH and gland does not produce T3 and T4. So, there is decrease in TSH levels from the anterior pituitary. The problem is in the pituitary gland. Therefore, the thyroid gland does not produce T3 and T4. And remember, the hypothalamus is functional. If the hypothalamus is functional, it will cause increased TRH through try to stimulate the uh, anterior pituitary to produce 
TSH. So the classical lab findings would be that would be seen in these patients would be decreased TSH, decreased T3, decreased T4 with an increased thyroid releasing hormone. Now, what are the problems that can happen with the pituitary gland? There can be a pituitary adenoma, a non-functioning pituitary adenoma, a mass in the pituitary uh, gland that is not producing anything. That is a non-functional adenoma, but it has destroyed the nerve fibers, it has destroyed the cells that are producing thyroid gland a th TSH hormone. Therefore, a pituitary adenoma causes TSH deficiency. Other causes include Sheehan syndrome. The classical presentation of Sheehan syndrome would be that you would receive a patient that after giving birth to a child during the birth, during the delivery, there was increased blood loss. And after the uh, delivery, the patient cannot give milk to her child. There is no milk let down. This occurs because uh, due to excessive blood loss during the delivery, there is lack of blood flow to the pituitary gland and pituitary ischemia takes place. And pituitary ischemia occurs which results in damage to the pituitary gland and pituitary gland cannot produce the hormones that it used to produce. So there is decreased TSH, decreased prolactin, decreased ACTH, all the hormone or the hormones that are produced from the pituitary gland are decreased due to ischemia to the pituitary gland due to blood loss in the pregnancy. Therefore, in Sheehan syndrome, there can be hypothyroidism. Sarcoidosis, hemochromatosis are infiltrative conditions that can destroy the pituitary gland. Cranial irradiation, exposure of radiation can cause destruction of the pituitary gland and pituitary gland won't produce TSH, that TSH will not be there, therefore the uh, thyroid gland will not produce T3, T4 hormones, hypothyroidism. So these are all the causes of secondary hypothyroidism where there is problem with the pituitary gland. Now coming to tertiary hypothyroidism, in tertiary hypothyroidism there is a hypothalamus problem, the problem is in the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is not producing thyroid releasing hormone. Therefore, there is decrease in TSH because thyroid releasing hormone from the hypothalamus is not being produced and it is not stimulating the anterior pituitary. When the anterior pituitary is not stimulated, the TSH levels will be low. And when the TSH levels will be low, then who cares? Thyroid gland will not produce T3 and T4. Therefore, you will see that there is decrease in TSH, decrease in T3, T4 with decrease in TRH. That is tertiary hypothyroidism where there is problem with the hypothalamus. So primary had the problem with the gland, secondary had the problem with the anterior pituitary and the tertiary has the problem with the hypothalamus. So this is how you differentiate that whether the patient is having primary hypothyroidism, secondary hypothyroidism or tertiary hypothyroidism. Now coming to the clinical features. In the clinical features, remember thyroid hormones are the fuel of the body. And whenever there is deficiency in the fuel of the body, the body starts slowing down. Each and every organ of the body starts start slowing down. That is the classical presentation of hypothyroidism. The body is fatigued. The person would feel tired. There will be cold intolerance. These patients will feel more uncomfortable during the winters. These patients will have modest weight gain. In the cardiovascular system, the cardiovascular system would slow down, the heart would slow down, there would be bradycardia. But remember an important point that there is hypertension in these patients. These patients would have increased peripheral vascular resistance. Like you would expect these patients to have hypothyroidism, but there is hypertension in these patients. Then that also occurs due to the lack of the fuel because these thyroid hormones are involved in the production of nitric oxide in these vessels and when the nitric oxide is not produced in these vessels, these vessels get vasoconstriction because nitric oxide is a vasodilator. So thyroid hormone deficiency would lead to decrease in nitric oxide and decrease in nitric oxide would cause vasoconstriction. So there would be isolated diastolic increase in the blood pressure like the blood pressure of that patient would be 130 by 110. So there is increase in diastolic blood pressure in these patients. So there would be hypertension. Another important point is that these patients would develop pleural effusion and these patients would also develop ascites. They occur, uh, the ascites and pleural effusion occurs due to obstruction of the lymphatics. The lymphatics develop lymphedema and that lymphedema is due to the myxedema in these patients. What is myxedema? We'll discuss that in a while. 
but remember the lymph uh, uh, lymphatics are obstructed there is lymphedema in these patients and these patients are more prone to pleural effusions and ascites the skin the skin is also slowing down there is no fuel to the skin there is decreased sweating there is a hair loss queen any sign is seen in these patients queen any a portrait of queen any shows that she was having loss of the lateral third of the eyebrows therefore uh, this sign is named as queen any sign where there is thinning out of the lateral third of the eyebrows and in patients with the hypothyroidism there is a loss of the lateral one third of the eyebrows thinning out of the lateral one third of the eyebrow is seen in patients with hypothyroidism hair loss due to the lack of thyroid hormones in the body these are brittle nails brittle dry nails that are seen in patients with hypothyroidism other than that the patient will be having doughy and puffy skin the doughy and puffy skins occurs due to myxedema in these patients what is myxedema a myxedema is basically accumulation of glycose aminoglycans and hyaluronic acid in the skin of the patient within the reticular layer of the dermis there is, there is deposition of the glycose aminoglycans and hyaluronic acid and this deposition of gags and hyaluronic acid in the skin causes the skin to become more puffy and there is edema in these patients that edema that is seen in these patients is a non pitting edema because this occurs due to deposition of glycose aminoglycans and hyaluronic acid this edema is a non pitting edema now the doughy and puffy skin is seen due to myxedema the obstruction of the lymphatics also occurs due to the myxedema reproductive system in the reproductive system there is abnormal menstrual cycle sometimes there can be menorrhagia sometimes there can be amenorrhea to understand the mechanism of abnormal menstrual cycle you need to understand a very important concept a concept that is highly tested in the exams in exams you would often see that they would ask you that the patient is having hypothyroidism and after that hypothyroidism patients has now developed a hyperprolactinemia why has patient developed a hyperprolactinemia in hypothyroidism why is there is increased prolactin in patient with hypothyroidism in patients with hypothyroidism there is hyperprolactinemia because TRH the, the thyroid releasing hormone that is being secreted from the hypothalamus it stimulates the anterior pituitary to release TSH and with that thyroid releasing hormone also stimulates the posterior pituitary to release the prolactin hormone now in patients with hypothyroidism the TRH was increased in primary and secondary hypothyroidism thyroid harm releasing hormone was increased in the body and that increased TRH in the body causes the prolactin to increase in blood so increased trh from the hypothalamus increases the prolactin formation from the pituitary gland therefore that increase trh actually causes hyperprolactinemia and whenever there is a hyperprolactinemia remember there are problem with the menses the menses are irregular or there may be amenorrhea no menses at all there is galactorrhea milk let down in patients without pregnancy without giving birth the patient starts having milk let down hyperprolactinemia galactorrhea abnormal menstrual cycle in men it would cause decreased libido erectile dysfunction premature ejaculation so these are all the problems that are seen and these are seen due to hyperprolactinemia in, pa in patients uh, with hypothyroidism the git slows down there is constipation there is ascites due to lymphedema there is a hoarseness of the voice why does the voice change the voice changes because there is myxedema of the vocal cords musculoskeletal system also slows down there is hypothyroid myopathy the muscles cannot work as uh, uh, properly as they used to work in the presence of the fuel the fuel is the thyroid hormones those thyroid hormones are absent and the glands cannot contract and there is destruction of the thyroid gland and remember in patients with hypothyroidism the myopathy that is caused by hypothyroidism increases cpk in contrast to hyperthyroid myopathy when we'll discuss that in our video on hyperthyroidism in hyperthyroidism the cpk levels are normal 
in hypothyroidism the myopathy causes increased cpk level so that's how you differentiate the myopathy due to hypothyroidism versus hyperthyroidism another very important and highly tested point in exams is the voltman sign what is voltman sign voltman sign there is delayed relaxation of the deep tendon reflexes whenever you check the deep tendon reflexes in these patients there is the initial jerk is normal but the relaxation of the feet or the relaxation of the muscle is delayed that delayed relaxation of the deep tendons is called as voltman sign a very commonly tested point in exams the cns also slows down poor memory poor cns concentration and depression in c is seen in these patients in trempent syndrome due to myxedema the median nerve gets compressed in the carpal tunnel and that develops carpal tunnel syndrome and patient would complain of tingling in the first three fingers and the thumb the third finger would be almost half so these the area that is supplied by the median nerve these patients would have tingling carpal tunnel syndrome is seen in these patients an important point to remember a very important point that old patients they will not present to you with the typical symptoms of hypothyroidism they would present to you with very few symptoms and those few symptoms would be dementia and depression early onset dementia in these patients is a sign that that patient might be developing hypothyroidism dementia and depression is commonly seen in patients who are having hypothyroidism in old age because in old age you might not be able to find the classical presentation of hypothyroidism but these patients the initial presentation of these patients would be with dementia and depression so make sure to check the thyroid hormone levels in these patients in summary we talked about what is hypothyroidism what is primary hypothyroidism the cause hashimoto thyroiditis being the most common one nutritional most common worldwide iatrogenic hypothyroidism de quervain hypothyroiditis the causes of secondary hypothyroidism the tertiary hypothyroidism clinical features of hypothyroidism cardiovascular hypertension bradycardia weight gain what is myxedema why hyperprolactinemia takes place uh, in the skin what are the findings that are seen in the reproductive system there is hyperprolactinemia and in the gi system there is constipation pharynx there is hoarseness and hypothyroid myopathy voltman sign cns there is depression carpal tunnel syndrome old patients might present with dementia and depression if you like my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine endocrine lectures and make sure to watch my next video on the treatment of hypothyroidism have a good day thank you